So why should you improve technician productivity? Well, first and foremost is profit and loss. Of course, you wanna decrease your expenses for your technicians. Uh, the more productive they are, the less ex uh, expenses it takes. Um, improve contract revenue. Um, the more productive they are, of course, that means you're less expenses and less um, money you're paying for your technicians and more money you're pocketing from your contracts. Improve utilization. Of course, complete more jobs in the workday. Um, being able to make it more efficient for your technicians that they're uh, going from point A to point B, but also touching everything in between. Uh, decrease non-billable time. Uh, another point is improve your KPIs, your first time fix rates. Uh, of course, the less times your techs have to go do return trips, the more money you're pocketing for under contracts. Uh, mean time to repair, decreasing that mean time, uh, make sure that you're more efficient and that your techs understand and, and uh, have the skill sets to handle the jobs in the first place. Improve data collection, uh, limit paperwork um, from going from paper to uh, digital. Um, of course, paperwork, you, you can look at uh, not only how much paperwork that has to be completed in the field, but there's opportunities for paperwork to get lost. Um, and then of course, improving reporting. Uh, Right now, if you're using Excel, you're having to extract data from a from a, another location or trying to collect paperwork to get your reporting. And then talent retention, empowering the technicians, give 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 them everything they need while they're on the job site, and increase uh, employee satisfaction. Uh, the easier you make the jobs, the less complaints you're going to have from your technicians, and the longer they're going to stay with you. So how do you improve your productivity? So first thing we're gonna talk about is technician skills management. First thing is you wanna ensure that you, you know what skills and certificates are required to work on the equipment that you're working on. You wanna hire resources, next item, you wanna hire resources with the proper skill sets. Next item is align the proper resources with the job requirements. You definitely don't want a plumber working on an electrician job. Identify gaps in work order skill set alignments for training opportunities. This is where you find out that uh, your skill sets aren't aligned with all, all everything that you're, you're currently servicing, and you might need to get certifications or hire the right personnel to do that. Improve your, your knowledge and training uh, provided to resources. This is again, we were talking about earlier about having everything at their fingertips, just being able to understand and know the equipment that you're working on. Uh, encourage your resources to gain new skill sets and certifications. If you can't find them in the marketplace as far as hiring, try to try to look internally into your resources and see if you can they can gain new skill sets and certifications to help you with your productivity. Next item is work order management. Number one thing is go digital. As we mentioned, less paperwork. Uh, no more paperwork traceability. So you, you don't have to worry about losing paperwork. You don't have to worry about um, paperwork being completed properly. Uh, no more manuals. Back when I was a technician, I remember I used to have to carry manuals for every piece of equipment that I worked on and just lugging those things around. Um, if you go digital, you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, another item is diagnose the failure with the customer. A lot of times customers will call in, say there's a problem with the equipment, not really understanding what the problem is, and you dispatch a technician, find out that the wrong skill set was sent. Just try to understand what and who should be going out to the site. Um, understand the equipment and the failures in order to build templates for service and failure types. So this is, uh, if you know that widget A has a, a temp failure and you know that for that, uh, you have to replace some filters and, and you have to replace the widget, add those parts to the template of the work order. Um, 
any tasks that are, are needed to be, be completed, like a recalibration of that widget or um, signatures captured for the replacement. Uh, the duration, how long it's going to take for that um, service, the skills required. Of course, this goes back to that point that we just talked about with the skills alignment, understanding your failures and and knowing who should you should dispatch, and then the knowledge base. As I mentioned earlier, this is where you can put everything in the th uh, palm of your hands for that technician to understand. They can do manuals. You can do um, items like. Uh, tips and tricks from previous um, resources or resources that are more skilled. And then reduce number of clicks and double entry. What's worse for a technician is going out, having to do a job and then have to wade through and try to figure out all the paperwork and do everything through their, their job to make sure that they have everything collected. Next item is route optimization. So use a schedule board with map capabilities for your dispatchers. This, this can help you decrease drive time, increase productivity, um, and de decrease missed opportunities like scheduled services. Um, if, you're, if you know you're going out to work on a uh, repair and there's a PM or an upgrade available for that same site, why not go ahead and uh, as it added as a, an attachment to the current service request. And then here, I just have a couple of examples. Um, this route here is not optimized. Uh, as you can see, there's excess of driving. You go from one to two, then three, then the four, the five. So this technician is bouncing around a lot. As you see from their workday here, they only have five jobs scheduled. It's only 74% utilization. And they have missed opportunities as well. As you see these here, these are jobs that, that could have been captured as well and added to their day. But because there's so much driving, their day's filled up and you can't fit, the, fit those jobs in. This here is actually an optimized route, as you see. It's, it's going in a cleaner route. There's not a lot of jumping. Um, there's uh, less driving. The uh, tech starts his day here. And as you remember, there was uh, an emblem here to show that there was a potential uh, requirement to be filled. And the tech was, that was pulled into that tech schedule. So this is actually one and two right here. And then three, four, five, six, seven. Um, this, now this, this uh, tech has seven jobs scheduled. So it's 88% 80, utilization. And the ability, and then it also gave you the ability to stack jobs, which we just talked about. Another item is mobilization. Provide mobile devices with everything they need to complete the job at their fingertips. The ability to see their schedule, what they have coming up. Job information with update capabilities, like site address with directions for, in real time. Tasks completed with current procedures and, and documents. How many times do you send a tech out and have them complete paperwork and find out that it's uh, two versions in the past. So they're out of, you're out of compliance. Parts used, resolutions. Resolutions help you kind of dictate your, your skills. Uh, notes and pictures they can add. Then you have equipment information with the history and the equipment reading up and reading updates. If you're tracking hours or, or pressure gauges or anything like that, just having that at their fingertips so they can see the previous history. And then knowledge base to access, tips and tricks, current version of the manuals. This is a big one, um, especially in the service industry. It, I remember back in the day when I was a technician, having to receive updates for my manuals and having to do inserts, um, just being able to know that you're working on the current version. Then there's inventory management. Of course, it's van stock. These are this is for fre frequently used parts. Make sure that your technicians have the proper parts for most of the failures that their te techs will see. Uh, with a min max that's tracked, 
then have it automated to replenish. Remote inventory locations. These are distribution centers um, for larger corporations where you can actually have um, parts shipped out to a remote location and have, have them uh, in a distribution center so it's um, for lesser used parts that you shouldn't have in the vans. And it's just closer to the customer sites and faster delivery for your techs. Then there's parts ordering. Make it easier for the techs. Um, having a searchable catalog of available parts and suggestive replacements. Um, just being able to give them, again, everything they should have in their hands to make their job easier and more efficient. And I keep talking about technology. Of course, we're a technology firm, so use technology to your advantage. Um, automate, automate, automate as much as you can. Uh, just gain, you gain efficiencies that way. Um, it just makes the jobs easier, less interaction for the techs. Their, their number one goal is to put on the Superman cape, go to the job site, fix it. Less paperwork is always better for technicians. Use, use automation to optimize, optimize your tech routes. I know I mentioned earlier about optimizing routes with a schedule board, but use automation. There's different platforms out there and um, different tools that can have algorithms that align your, your resources and the skills that are required for the services. And it, it'll uh, lower the amount of drive time. Use advanced analytics. Um, this is this is tools that take all that data that you're collecting and actually utilizes it to to help you enhance your operations. Uh, so if you could give you su suggested durations for all these different failure types that you have, if you start seeing that uh, failure is taken on average 15 minutes to diagnose and repair, uh, then uh, but your duration currently is an hour, you can maybe lower that, that time down and uh, use the suggested time to, so you can add more, more jobs to the day. Suggested templates. Maybe uh, the, you're starting to see a trend and, and certain new failures are being added to the equipment that you currently don't have tracked. This will suggest new failure templates where you can add, actually make sure that your techs have the right parts, make sure that they have all the knowledge base and everything around that new failure. Training requirements. Maybe you're starting to see a trend where some of your, some of your techs are taking a little bit longer for failure types. Um, this is an opportunity to maybe train them up or even look at new training ways, new ways to train them. Uh, and then, of course, cost of service, as I mentioned, that's number one. Uh, everywhere, everybody knows that um, field service is usually a cost center, but uh, the, low, the more you can lower that limit and increase profitability, the better. Uh, MT, MTTR, mean time to repair. This is a metric for your tracking to see how long it takes to repair. This is what I mentioned earlier about the, the, uh, the training. As you're tracking that, maybe it's you, you can start looking into training better. Remote assist. This is a new feature that you know a lot of a lot of uh, CRMs are starting to look into. But this is where you can actually connect with experts while you're on site. If you're if you're stuck and you can't figure it out, have the technician can go back to the back office and talk to a technical support engineer or or maybe even to another, a senior tech in the field to get some su suggestions. Um, and then you can actually see what the technicians see. Then we got remote diagnostics. This is uh, where, you, where your equi the equipment actually reports in. Uh, it tells you the exact failure. Um, Maybe it even has capabilities to do remote repair where your technicians don't even have to get on the road. 
They can do a remote repair or diagnostic so they can understand the true failure or even do um, a repair while they're on, on sitting at home before they even get on the road. And of course, this is what I'm mentioning, the correct fault identified. That's the main thing. You wanna make sure that your technicians are going out to work on the right things. And with this remote diagnostics, it'll tell you exactly what the problem is. And that way you know who to send and what to send. 